hello everybody welcome back to a new video uh, today I want to talk a little bit more about my template and um, show you a full project that I'm working on which is kind of um, in the middle of production stage and I kind of want to show you how I take those things I explained in the last video and um, put them into action and some of the more interesting things I do and um, let's just go into it and see a little bit more in detail how everything works okay so here is the big project that I'm talking about this is a remix of um, as you can see Avalon and Tristan's we are psychedelic and um, as you can see there's a lot of stuff going on here uh, if you want to see me make this um, I hope when I upload this I might still be working on it on stream and if not, there's going to be a video out when the actual song comes out and I'll go over the whole project and um, I'll also upload all the streams to my YouTube channel so you can have a look at them and look them back if you want to. Um, but for now, let's just dive into some of the interesting things uh, that are in the project organization wise. So as you can see, we still have our main groups here and um, the helpers track actually is now completely populated as you can see here there's a lot of stuff going on up here which we're going to talk about but i first want to kind of show you what um, we talked about with this multi analyzer here and um, i'm just going to play the kick and the bass for you now and i want to show you kind of how they sound together and how you can actually see any problems so I've opened up the multi analyzer here this is the one that's on the master but it really doesn't matter and um, if I want to let's say if I want to see if my mix for the kick and bass are good I can use this to kind of check for any overlapping frequencies those kind of stuff as you can see here my baseline is a little bit louder than the kick and we can for example see uh, that I need to compress the baseline here so those are the kind of mixing things I use this for we can also check the sonogram here which allows us to see a little bit more about um, how they sit frequency wise you can see they're nicely filling up the spectrum and uh, if we want to get even more detail on the frequency, if there are any collisions, we can use the collisions tab here. Which shows that there is some collisions in the low end, which I'm going to have to fix. Um, but that is something I'm going to have to do in the mixing stage. Now the main thing I want to show you in this video is how I actually use these helper tracks here. Um, this is a really good example because, uh, as you can see, we have have some more stuff because of it is a remix first of all let's talk about this i um, added um, i still want to be able to reference this to any song i want to so i can drop in any song here but i also want to reference it to the original so i just made a copy of our reference track and uh, normally my reference track is uh, key bound to have a solo button on my keyboard as you can see there's the end key that um, sets up the solo and um, for this particular project, I decided to not have a key bind for this thing, just to not make it too complicated. And every time I want to listen to the original and see what they're doing, how I can kind of give my own twist to something, I can just go up here and solo it by hand with the mouse. So that's a cool idea. You don't have to limit yourself to one reference track. Uh, you can have, for example, you can even have multiple of these tracks and then make multiple key binds if you want to, or um, yeah, if you're doing a remix, you can make a, another track for uh, a place where you can drop the original track so you can kind of listen to it. What I also did is I um, took this track, listened to it, and I wrote down all the sections of the, the main track. As you can see, we have intro, build, and then we have drop. And I kind of go through, in the drop you can see we have I uh, wrote down first synth and then morph to second synth. 
this kind of gives me a more in-depth view of the structure without having to listen to the actual track to do so, which is really useful. And this helps giving you some extra ideas what you can do uh, in terms of like um, your own structure, uh, kind of copying the structure of the original, well not copying, but kind of getting inspired of the structure of the original can really help sometimes. And as you can see, um, normally these marker tracks, I don't make them at the start. I kind of go on and shift them up while I'm producing on these things. And as you can see, this is kind of everything that's colored is kind of the final that's already in the structure it is. That's the way I like it. And then once I'm really satisfied with these structures, I'll color these things in. And then I'll go and move on on the, the next part. So in that way, I kind of work linearly through the project from start to finish. I want every section to sound good before I move on to the next section. So that's why you can see there are already a lot of audio tracks here and things that kind of add stuff like these effects and stuff. Normally, I see a lot of people make a basic version of that track and then they'll go uh, around and add effects to that. But um, for me, that's not really uh, the best way to do it because I like to have a workflow where I can just uh, kind of copy over sections and then work from there instead of, you know, building up your entire kick and then your entire bass and then your main lead sounds and then your effects under that. So this way, it, um, for me, it kind of works better. We can also take a look at these notes here, which are rather interesting. Uh, I. Um, first of all, I wrote two notes here, which is the the remix for the project and then the key of the original and the BPM of the original. Uh, this, the remix itself is no longer in this key. I decided to turn it up to G major uh, because that sounded better to me. And then there are a whole bunch of colored notes here. As you can see, we have some green ones, some black ones and some red ones. And the Kind of the way I organized this is um, I wrote all these notes uh, after my second stream. I kind of went through the song again and decided, okay, what am I going to do the, the, the next stream? And um, I wrote down all these things. And then in the next stream, I kind of went through that again and kind of asked myself, do I still agree with this? And if so, I did them. For example, do cool stuff to the ARP. Uh, we took the ARP and lowered it a few octaves to make it sit back in the mix a little bit more. And um, yeah, that kind of fixes the problem I had with it, which is that it was too present and not really nicely contributing to the whole song. So then I kind of ticked it off, made it green, so it, to show uh, that I actually did this. And then uh, the black notes are things I still have to do. So I have to record some more vocals or redo some more vocals, uh, which you can see down here below. It's talking about this vocal part right there, which I have to redo. And then we have some other things here. And um, here I also have to make a decision about some other vocal stuff and make some atmospheric sounds. And then we have these red areas and that is where I go in and I decide okay the thing I wrote down this is no this does no longer apply I don't like this um, I don't want to execute it I kind of still keep it there just to have the idea back in my head because I once had the idea to do that but um, this way I, I still keep the idea but I just kind of say to myself okay I've decided that I not do not want to do this and um, yeah so that's kind of how I go over or how I organize my projects and these big projects again it's really useful to just have some groups where you can find things um, let's go for a quick example I'm going to play uh, this track and we're going to see You can hear that there's a vocal in this part. And let's say I want to edit it. I want to, you know, remove some mid range from there. 
I already know that it's going to be at the bottom of my um, project because that's where the vocals group is. And then I just have to look in the area where are the vocals playing and then together with if there are multiple things playing here, then I can just use these names here to quickly see, oh, it's this one. And then I can go in and do anything I want to it, do the EQing or whatever I need to do to it. So that's, it's really useful to have these things named already. And as you can see, it's very simple naming. I just have flute intro, which may, means that there is a flute in the intro. Nothing fancy known. I see sometimes people put in keys and tempos and kind of all those properties in here. I tend to not do that, just not to clutter up um, the things in here. I kind of want to have a glance at it and just quickly see, okay, this track does that thing instead of having all these extra uh, things which might confuse you when just searching for something. Um, if I really want to save a key or a specific timing or anything, I'll edit it in the clip. I can just go ahead and say, uh, something like that. And then, yeah, then if I really need to save something, either that or I'll put it in the notes if it's more of a general thing. So I hope this helps kind of make you understand my workflow in terms of a bigger project. And I hope this helps kind of organizing your own projects, finding some cool tricks you can use to really make your projects uh, more workable and faster to work with. And if you like this content, please uh, subscribe. And if you have any further suggestions for videos you would like me to make, then uh, leave them in the comments. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.